Hey guys, welcome to Budget EDH. On this week's episode, we have Itali Primal Storm with a $100 budget. All prices in this video are sponsored by TCG Player. If you use the link in the description below to buy singles, accessories, or the deck in this video, it'll help support our channel and help us create future content. Another way that you can support our channel directly is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash budget EDH. There's a link down below in the description and for as little as a dollar per month, you'll have access to enter into all of our giveaways, including giveaways for decks that we create from deck techs, merch, and sponsored product. We also have tiers where you can help collaborate with us to create a deck, and we will create a video specifically for you and your deck and send you the deck. Check us out on Patreon. If you're new to our channel and want to continue seeing budget commander content, please take a minute to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon and it will notify you of any episodes that we create in the future. Just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who entered into the Muldrotha the Grave type giveaway. It means a lot for all the subscriptions and comments on our videos. We will announce the winner with next week's episode and stay tuned for more contests that are coming up soon. Itali Primal Storm is four red red for legendary creature elder dinosaur out of Rivals of Ixalan. Whenever Atali Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. Then you may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. With our Atali deck, ramp is extremely important because you want to get your Atali down as soon as possible so you can start storming off with other player spells. Haste is really important because you're playing a six drop dinosaur so on turn five or six when you are able to Put your Atali onto the battlefield and start attacking, you want to do so right away. Another reason for that is people are going to be targeting your Atali with removal, so you want to make sure you can get that first swing in before you have to fight off some removal. Extra combats are really important as well. If you're able to flip an extra combat off the top with your Atali, you're able to attack again and get another trigger. And then we're going to play some mass land destruction in this deck. If you have a 6-6 six, six dinosaur on the board, that's able to trigger cards for free off of your library and your opponent's libraries. Destroying their lands is really good. Atali is weak to board wipes and single target removal. We did include a few pieces of protection in this deck, but he is still weak to removing him. And you'll really love playing this deck if you like playing other people's cards. With Atali, you're able to sometimes steal their combo pieces and ruin their game plan as well as also steal some of their really big threats. This deck is $101 on TCG Player. So let's kick off this deck tech by talking about some ramp that we have in this deck. I'm not gonna go over every single card that we have included. You can check out the deck list if you wanna see every card, but I just wanna call out some important cards that help us with our strategy. So first up, we have Hazaret's Monument. Three colorless for a legendary artifact. Red creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. So this card's really good because it's gonna help you get your Atali out quicker. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you can loot. And then we have Gilded Lotus, five colorless for an artifact. Tap it to add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. And then we have Mana Geyser, three red red for sorcery. Add a red mana to your mana pool for each tap land your opponents control. So let's talk about some ways that we're able to give our Atali and other creatures haste. Haste is really important in this deck, so we do have 13 ways that we're able to give our creatures haste in this deck because we want our Atali to come down and swing right away. That way he's not open up to any removal or board wipes because he is weak to those. So first up we have Fervor. Two in a red, creatures you control have haste. And then we have Mass Hysteria. One red mana for an enchantment. All creatures have haste. This is important to note that your opponent's creatures will also have haste with this card as well, but you're set up in a way that it's gonna benefit you more than them. And then we have Hammer of Perforos. One red red for legendary enchantment artifact. Creatures you control have haste. And then you can sacrifice a land for two and a red, put a 3-3 colorless Gullum Enchantment artifact creature token onto the battlefield. So this is nice, you're able to get rid of some extra lands you have on the battlefield to get some extra creatures if you need to. And then we have Generator Servant, one and a red for a creature elemental. Tap it, sacrifice Generator Servant, add two colorless mana to your mana pool. If that mana was spent on a creature spell, it gains haste until end of turn. Not only does this help Atali have haste, it's also gonna help ramp him as well. And then we have Blood Sworn Steward. Two red red for a creature with flying that has commander creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and have haste. This is gonna help pump your Tali and give him haste, which is really nice. And then we have Urbrass the Hidden. Three red red for a legendary creature. Creatures you control have haste. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. This is nice that it's gonna give your Tali a path to attack because creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. 
And then we have Lightning Mauler, one in a red for a creature that has Soul Bond. You may pair this creature with another unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield. As long as Lightning Mauler is paired with another creature, both creatures have haste. So this is really nice because any creature that you play before Atali, you're able to pair it to give them haste. And then when Atali enters the battlefield, you're able to repair the Lightning Mauler with the Atali to give it haste as well. Then we have a couple of lands that give haste when you tap a red mana and tap it in Flamekin Village in Hanwear Battlements. And then we have Otepec Huntmaster, one in a red for a creature. Dinosaur spells you cast cost one less to cast. And then tap it, target dinosaur gains haste until end of turn. This card's really good because it's going to help reduce the cost of your Atali because he is a dinosaur. And he's also able to give Atali haste when he comes down on the battlefield. And then we have a couple of protection equipments in Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots. They give protection to Atali and also grant him haste. And then we have Ogre Battle Driver, two red red for a creature. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gets plus two plus zero and gains haste until end of turn. Let's talk about some of the ways that we're able to give extra combat to our Atali to get additional triggers. So first up we have Relentless Assault. Two red red for sorcery. Untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. And then we have World at War. Three red red for sorcery. After the first post-combat main phase this turn, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures that attack this turn. And then it has Rebound. If you cast this spell from your hand, exile it as it resolves. At the beginning of your next upkeep, you may cast this card from exile without paying its mana cost. One important thing to note is if you do flip this off the top with Atali and cast it, you will not get that rebound trigger, so you do have to play it from your hand. And then we have Seize the Day, three and a red for a sorcery. Untap target creature. After this main phase, there is an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. And then this does have flashback. You're able to cast it from your graveyard to get an additional use out of it. And then we have Fury of the Horde, five red red for a sorcery. You may exile two red cards from your hand rather than pay Fury of the Horde's mana cost. Untap all creatures that attack this turn. After this main phase, there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase. So this is really nice because it does have that additional cost in that you can exile two dead cards in your hand to play this Fury of the Horde for free. And then we have Hellkite Charger, four red red for a dragon, flying haste. Whenever Hellkite Charger attacks, you may pay five red red. If you do, untap all attacking creatures, and after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So next up, we have some mass land destruction spells. I do really like mass land destruction in this deck. Although a lot of players don't like it, it does work out really well with Atali because you're able to play cards off the top of your library and your opponent's libraries. So if you have an active Atali, destroying your opponent's lands puts you in a really good spot. So first up, we have Wildfire. Four red red for a sorcery. Each player sacrifices four lands. Wildfire deals four damage to each creature. And then we have From the Ashes. Three and a red for a sorcery. Destroy all non-basic lands. For each land destroyed this way, its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield. Then each player who searched his or her library this way shuffles it. This card works out really well in mono-colored decks because we are playing a lot of basic lands. And if your opponents are playing three colors or more for their commander, they're not going to have a lot of basic lands in their library. And they're going to be leaning heavily on non-basic lands. So you can really get some of your opponents for playing a greedy mana base with this card. We do have a couple of board wipes in this deck. Since we're not playing a lot of creatures and we're really relying on our commander, board wipes are really good in this deck. So first up we have Volcanic Vision. Five red red for a sorcery. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Volcanic Vision deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to each creature your opponents control. Exile Volcanic Vision. So this is really nice because it's a one-sided board wipe. You can get back an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard, like an extra combat spell that works out really well in this deck. And then we have Chain Reaction. Two red red for a sorcery. Chain Reaction deals X damage to each creature, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. So this will really punish an opponent who's trying to go wide with tokens or with mana creatures in that you're able to wipe the board for the amount of creatures on the battlefield. Let's talk about a card that works out really well in this deck, and that's Strionic Resonator. Two colorless for an artifact. Pay two and tap it. Copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. This card works out really well with Atali as you're able to get two triggers when you attack with it if you use the Strionic Resonator. And this gives you more chances to find a big hit when you attack. Another card I've been really impressed with in testing is Chaos Wand. It's three colorless for an artifact. Pay four and tap it. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card. 
You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then put the exiled cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of that library in a random order. I've been hosed by this card a few times, and it works out really well if your opponents go to search for an instant or sorcery spell with, say, a mystical tutor. You're able to use the chaos wand to get whatever they just put on the top of their library and cast it for free. It is kind of slow, but it does work out with the theme of this deck and that we're trying to play cards off the top of our opponent's library. And this card is a really cheap pickup at only 50 cents. Another card that works out really well with the theme of our deck is Stolen Strategy. Four and a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of each opponent's library. Until end of turn, you may cast non-land cards from among those exiled cards, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. This is going to give you another chance to look at your opponent's top card of their library each turn, and you're able to cast those spells. You do have to pay for the cost, but you are able to cast spells of different colors with the mana that you have available to you. So next up, we have a really cheap and powerful card and that's Sunbird's Invocation. Five and a red for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You may cast a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying for its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This gives you a almost cascade-like effect. One thing to note here is that you do have to cast the spells from your hand. So if you cast spells with Atali's trigger, this will not trigger the Sunbird's Invocation. So that is one important thing to note with this card. But this card does work out really well with the theme that we're trying to like play cards from our library. And it is really cheap, it's only a dollar. So go out and pick this up if you haven't already. Let's talk about a few cards that we include in this deck as payoffs for Atali. Since we are budget, we cannot include the Eldrazi Titans, which would work out perfectly in this deck and would be an auto include if you do have them. So first up, we have Artisan of Kozilek, nine colorless for creature Eldrazi. When you cast this spell, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it has Annihilator 2. Whenever this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices two permanents. And then we have Apex of Power, seven red, red, red for a sorcery. Exile the top seven cards of your library. Until end of turn, you may cast non-land cards exiled this way. If this spell was cast from your hand, add 10 mana of any one color to your mana pool. This card's really nice. If you flip it off the top with a tally, you're going to dig seven cards deeper, and you're able to play those cards until the end of the turn. And then we have Steel Hellkite. Six colorless for an artifact creature dragon that has flying. You can pay two, Steel Hellkite gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. And then you can pay X. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. So this works out really well and gives you a little bit more interaction on a big 5-5 five five flying body. And then we have Magmatic Force. Five red, red, red for a creature elemental. At the beginning of each upkeep, Magmatic Force deals three damage to any target. One thing to note here is it does work on each upkeep, so this includes your opponent's upkeeps as well. And then we have Inferno Titan. Four red red for a creature giant. You can pay one to give Inferno Titan plus one plus zero until end of turn. And whenever Inferno Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. This card will come down and you'll get the trigger right away. So if your opponents have any like mana dorks on the battlefield, you're able to pick them off one by one with this card. And then we have Molten Primordial. Five red red for a creature avatar with haste. When Molten Primordial enters the battlefield, for each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste until end of turn. So if your opponents have some big creatures or creatures that are holding back your Atali, you're able to play this card and gain control of them. And then you can swing in with those cards as well and get some additional value. There is an alternate win con in this deck that's a two card combo that will give you infinite combat steps and attacks. And the two card combo is an interaction with Helm of the Host and Godo Bandit Warlord. So Helm of the Host is four colorless for legendary artifact equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. If equipped creature is legendary, that token gains haste and it does have a quip cost of five. And then we have Godo Bandit Warlord, five and a red for a legendary creature human barbarian. 
When Godo Bandit Warlord enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card and put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. Whenever Godo attacks for the first time each turn, untap it and all samurai you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. So with Godo, you're able to search up your Helm of the Host, put it onto the battlefield, and then you can equip it to Godo and then attack. And with that attack trigger, you are going to get a copy of Godo that enters the battlefield. And since Helm of the Host makes it to where it's not legendary, you're going to have two copies of Godo Bandit Warlord. And then you get the additional combat phase with the Godo. And then when you swing the second time, the Helm of the Host is going to trigger and you're going to get an additional copy of Godo Bandit Warlord. And this is just going to keep going in an infinite loop. You're going to keep attacking and getting extra combat phases with the Godos. And every time another one is going to enter the battlefield. So you're able to get infinite combats with this and infinite Godos onto the battlefield. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video today. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Reddit. We'll see you next time.